All right, so this one I did not see coming. So Apple has literally just announced the Creative Studio. Yeah, exactly what you wanted, another subscription. But I gotta say, this one, hear me out. So on January 28th, Apple is going to have another way to purchase their already existing suite of creative apps. Now, let me save you the suspense because when I first saw the collection of icons in the little Mac rumors thumbnail that I saw posted, my brain just exploded with euphoria, thinking that this is the reason that Apple has been so quiet on Final Cut the past handful of years and, and Aperture that got axed all those years ago. And like, yes, they've been working on stuff behind the scenes and we all just doubted them. And and, and now they're going to release this whole new suite of new amazing apps. Nah. So what Apple seems to be doing is becoming obsessed with bundles. First, we saw them bundle all of their uh, existing subscription services with Apple One. This is where you can get your iCloud storage, your Apple podcast, Apple News, Apple Music, Arcade, bundled together for a single subscription price. And then more recently, and really not talked about enough, is Apple Care One, which right now, if you still have never heard of and you have a bunch of Apple devices that you're paying Apple Care for individually, check it out after this video because I just saved like 50 15 bucks a month by combining my Apple Watch, my iPad, my iPhone, my Apple Vision Pro, my MacBook Pro into one Apple Care One subscription that I think gives you like four or five devices for 20 bucks. And then it's just $5 a device added on top of that. Crazy good deal. And we've also seen Apple go subscriptions with some of their creative apps, testing it out in the smaller markets like Final Cut Pro for iPad has always been a subscription app for the past couple of years that it's been out, as well as testing in there the Final Cut camera app. So what is Apple Creative Studio? Well, it's basically a collection of one, two, three, four, five, ten creative apps that Apple already has. And they're kind of combining a couple suites here. So we have the apps that come on your Mac, Pages, Keynote, and Numbers, the Microsoft Word equivalent apps. For the audio professionals, Logic Pro and Main Stage. For the video pros, we have Final Cut Pro and Compressor. And for the photographers, Pixelmator Pro, if you forgot that Apple purchased them a couple years ago. Reviving from the grave, essentially, Aperture. For this 10 price bundle, they are going to charge $12.99 a month or $129 a year. Or if you get a education discount, you can get it for $2.99 a month. A quick note that I forgot to say in the video is one other standout feature that Apple has as an advantage over other subscription companies like Adobe. It's not something Adobe couldn't do, but just chooses not to. Apple is including Creative Studio in the family share plan. So if you have a family set up, like I share certain paid apps with Michelle, if someone in your family pays for a Creative Studio bundle, up to five users can share that Creative Studio bundle. So that is another added value proposition for you. And it's important to note that they will continue the standalone purchase prices as well, at least for the foreseeable future. So if you want to just buy Final Cut Pro once and just have it, you can continue to do that. And even just that decision when a company offers more than one ways to buy their product, and it includes both subscription, standalone, and lifetime purchasing options, I believe they automatically should get no hate. Seriously, because like, what is there to complain about? If you hate subscriptions, you can still buy it at the same uh, purchase price. Now, what I do find weird is uh, the lack of like updates within that. Yeah, we're going to get to Final Cut in a minute. But for right now, any Mac user is asking, well, why would I pay for that stuff? If you've already purchased Final Cut Logic or whatever pro app you need, your Mac automatically comes with pages, keynote and numbers. So why on earth would I pay a monthly subscription for that existing software? Well, apparently Apple Creative Studio members will get access to a suite of new AI premium features. And they subtly talk about some of these features in the newsroom app that I'll leave linked in the description below for you to check out if you want. For example, if you go into Keynote, you'll be able to outline a bunch of slides and then it just generates it. And being a, a Creative Studio member, you will get access to a library of uh, royalty free imagery and graphics. So again, doesn't sound all that bad if you're just the casual Mac user that jumps into Word or you need some spreadsheets, then sure, just keep the free version that came on your Mac. And if you really are obsessed with every new AI tool possible and want to take full advantage of everything that's being integrated, then uh, maybe it's worth it. Now, of course, I was looking at the apps like 
uh, Final Cut, for example, any new major updates there. It doesn't seem like it. Like Apple added a few AI features here and there in some recent times, but with this announcement, I don't see any direct like major new announcements. Maybe that will come before the January 28th, uh, you know, actual launch time. But I think could be interesting and why the premium versions are what's including the AI models is it was just announced a day or two ago that Apple and Google are joining together. And it seems like Apple's basically going to pay Google for their base Gemini model. And that's probably going to cost them a pretty penny. So this could be seen as a way to kind of make their money back. So like I said a few minutes ago, I don't inherently have any issues when companies start offering a subscription price. I was a teenager when online subscription services became a thing. And I'll tell you, I would not be where I'm at today without subscription prices. Because of course, at that time, I was an Adobe guy. And for those of you who remember, if you just wanted to buy a copy of Photoshop that was re-released every 18 months or so, it was like $1,600. If you wanted the full creative suite, it was like $8,000. So yeah, my first couple years were spent pirating CS3 or whatever version it was at the time. But then when they finally announced uh, Adobe CC Creative Cloud and for like 25 bucks a month or whatever, you could get access to these pro applications, their latest true public version with all the great features and no weird bugs that you have to find keygens for and stuff. Oh my goodness. Finally, I was able to start my photography career and I I, and I felt so legit because I had a legal copy of Photoshop or the statute of limitations on piracies up, right? But honestly, I think the only way that Creative Studio kind of takes off is if they finally put some real horsepower behind catching up on their pro application. DaVinci Resolve, which continues to be a totally free option, which gives you 90 to 95% of the features, or their one-time paid model, continues to be, in my opinion, a much, much higher value than Adobe or Final Cut's offerings with a much more expensive subscription model. I do hope that with this new service, it's really got some oomph behind it that the people at Apple can get excited for and some bigger updates besides just saying AI premium features just to throw in some buzzwords, hoping that that sells a bunch of people on the bundle. I think they are launching it at a very fair price to begin with, especially, I mean, anyone in education again 299 a month for 10 of these applications pretty sweet but again you can also get a lot of the same value just by having a mac in general and then by joining some other free apps as well davinci resolve finity and of course if you're trying to learn davinci resolve then i have my davinci resolve foundations course you can also check out the link in the description but that's reserved for the really cool people who actually want to learn uh, davinci resolve very quick and get comfortable in it so i don't know is that you who knows as always, I would love to hear what you guys think about Apple's new Creative Studio. This is an interesting one. We'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks if it kind of just silently launches or if there's more news to come with any of these 10 apps. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.